Good afternoon and good morning to those of you who are out west. Welcome to today's demo cast from the Construction Specifier and CMC. My name is Tristan. I'm the Associate Editor for the Construction Specifier and I'll be moderating today's presentation. Just to cover a few housekeeping items before we get started. If you have any question during today's demo cast, please enter them using the Q&A section, which you can find at the bottom of your Zoom window. We will address as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. While Zoom has a raise hand function, we will be keeping everyone's mics muted, so please only use the Q&A instead. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties during the demo cast, you can enter a message in the chat which you'll find right next to the Q&A, and we'll do our best to help from there. Today's demo cast is being recorded and will be available on the Construction Specifiers website by this time next week. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Keith Linda Mulder. Keith is CMC's Sustainability Manager. He has extensive background in sustainability with nearly 20 years of experience in the steel industry. He has played a part in the evolution of green building and how steel can be an environmentally preferable solution. He's involved in several trade associations with experience as the previous vice chairman of sustainability committee of the CRSI, the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute. And he was previous chairman of the life cycle committee expert group for World Steel. And as the former chairman of USGBC Texas, he has a degree in business administration from Ferris State University in Grand, Big Rapids, Michigan, and is also a LEED AP and NAHB certified green professional. These days, sustainability isn't just a goal, it's a mandate. Project builders everywhere are actively looking for steel products to reach net zero emissions targets. Today, you'll learn about CMC's Rebar Zero and how it can help accomplish your net zero goals by neutralizing the greenhouse gas emissions associated with its production, fabrication, and delivery to your job site. Keith, we appreciate you for joining us today. Please take it away. Thank you, Tristan, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, today, as Tristan mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, Rebar Zero. Scope 3 emissions, otherwise known as embodied carbon, has increasingly been a focus for building designers and engineers, contractors, and building owners. As, a drive, as the drive to reduce embodied carbon gains momentum, new tools and new products develop into solutions to achieve these goals. As expected, much of the opportunity for improvement requires a focus on major building components like foundations and structures and the materials that typically make up these components. Cement and steel have long been recognized as materials which can move the needle fastest. Therefore, the focus has been on understanding the emissions profile of these materials and what can be done to reduce their footprint. Tools like life cycle analysis or LCA and environmental product declarations or EPDs have been developed to aid the design teams in choosing the right design and the best materials. They have helped point to preferred production methods and energy efficiency opportunities which have continuously made improvements. Today, I'd like to discuss how CMC is leading the steel industry to the next level of low embodied carbon steel production by introducing Rebar Zero. First, a little bit about CMC. CMC is a 115 year old steel maker that began as a single recycling yard just outside Dallas, Texas. Today, we're a Fortune 500 company with over 12,000 employees globally and more than 250 recycling yards, steel mills, and fabrication centers. While CMC is well known for our steel products, we recently expanded into a new business segment by adding the Tensar division. Tensar focuses on innovative solutions for so soil stabilization and earth reinforcement for projects like foundations, roads, bridges, and other civil engineering projects. To be a leader in the steel industry, we've committed ourselves to staying ahead of the curve. We've always been an early adopter of smart new manufacturing technologies and techniques. We continuously strive to find innovative ways to do what we do more efficiently, more cost effectively, and with less impact on our environment. In 1962, CMC built our first mini mill, which used an electric arc furnace and recycled scrap steel. Today, every CMC 
mill uses EAF technology and nearly 100% recycled scrap to produce new steel products. More recently, we have introduced the micro mill, which has an even smaller footprint and can take recycled scrap steel from its molten state directly to a finished product in one uninterrupted strand. They use energy more efficiently by eliminating the need to reheat semi-finished billet. Other advancements such as rebar slitting and spool rebar drive efficiency even further and are just a few of the forward-thinking innovations that have made CMC what we are today. In the steel industry, one major difference is how steel is produced. High recycled content not only reroutes end-of-life steel scrap out of landfills and into new steel products, it avoids much of the emissions generally associated with the processing of virgin iron. Every ton of steel that is recycled conserves 2,500 pounds of iron ore, 1,400 pounds of coal, and 1,200 pounds of limestone. By using a scrap-based EAF steelmaking process, our CO2 emissions are more than 60% less than the global steelmaking average. Steel is the most recycled material in the world, and few can claim to recycle as much metal as CMC. Last year, our vertically integrated manufacturing process saved approximately 10 million tons of steel from being landfilled. As one of the world's most efficient steel producers, our low baseline greenhouse gas emissions put us in a unique position. As mentioned earlier, the demand for low embodied carbon building materials continues to rise. For some projects, low isn't just good enough. Let's talk more about carbon neutral or net zero steel. As building owners and the supply chain in general are more focused on sustainability and the overall environmental impact of a project, we are seeing more and more requests for carbon neutral steel. While some projects haven't demanded zero embodied carbon, some projects like state funded projects in California are setting thresholds which are being used to make buying decisions. Public policy demands are continuing to spread at the local, state, and federal levels. It's not only public projects, but a wide variety of private projects are now measuring embodied carbon and looking for ways to reduce the overall impact. Rebar Zero offers these customers a cost-effective solution to balance out greenhouse gas emissions with the use of renewable energy credits, or RECs, and carbon offset credits. Only by our ability to accurately measure the full impact of producing and delivering a ton of steel to a project are we able to provide a turnkey solution that will completely offset embodied carbon. First, a little background on RECs and offsets. RECs are tradable commodities that are proof that one megawatt hour of electricity was generated from an eligible renewable energy source like solar or wind. Represent the renewable attributes of the actual generated electrons and how the electricity can be generated in one location can be delivered through the grid to a manufacturing facility located somewhere else. RECs may only be used to offset scope two emissions. These are indirect emissions associated directly with the use of electricity. RECs translate into different emission factors depending upon the location of the solar or wind facility. The emission factors times the electricity consumed equals the total scope two emissions that need to be mitigated. Carbon offsets, on the other hand, are issued for verified emission reductions from a project that are specifically intended to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase storage of carbon, or directly remove GHGs from the atmosphere. The projects are a direct result of investment or purchase of corresponding offset credits. These carbon offset credits can only be used to offset scope one, these are direct emissions that we have direct control over, and scope three emissions. Scope three emissions are anything upstream or downstream of the on-site production of the product. These include items we purchase to make these products to transportation and other similar emissions. Many times, some emissions just can't be eliminated directly. For example, as a producer of carbon steel products, carbon is an important ingredient. Therefore, it's ultimately impossible to completely eliminate. The use of carbon offsets is one way to balance out those necessary emissions. Looking at the differences another way, this chart shows how the emissions of the two different credits 
are addressed. Likewise, how each credit is measured is an important part of the calculation and only possible with an in-depth knowledge of the emissions throughout the manufacturing process. Primary takeaway of this slide is that RECs are measured in megawatt hours and carbon offsets are measured in tons of CO2e, meaning the underlying tracking and modeling of the product emission profile is critical to calculate correctly. So applying RECs and carbon offsets to an already low embodied carbon product can provide 100% carbon neutral rebar on any project. The important distinction here is Rebar Zero is not just addressing our direct emissions and electricity consumption. Rebar Zero looks beyond our inside the gate emissions profile and looks upstream and downstream to neutralize scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions on any project. This is the important difference from any other zero carbon product on the market today. So let's briefly look at the specification and ordering process. The most important step is to call out Rebar Zero in any specification or design documentation. Our commercial team can provide guidance, any guidance up for pricing that and pricing that might be needed. Since each project is different, ultimately we'll need a few pieces of information to make sure we can accurately price and track the project. While total size of project and location will be known as we develop the quote. Some basic information such as anticipated start and completion dates will help coordinate the recs and offsets so they can be, be aligned with the actual production and delivery of the products. Very large projects or projects that are expected to extend over a long period of time should be discussed again with our commercial team. EMC typically coordinates multiple fabrication facilities and multiple steel mills to deliver a complete project. So again, matching these recs and, and offsets with the actual production and the actual locations are important throughout the process. With the basic job information, we use a carbon calculator to determine the total greenhouse gas emissions which will be required to offset. Further, these emissions are divided into scope one, scope two, and scope three, and we can identify the total recs and carbon offsets that will be needed on this project. The results of this calculation can be communicated to the project team to be included with the overall project calculations. For projects that are seeking LEED certification, the reduction of embodied carbon may be used to document exemplary, exemplary performance credits and whole building LCA results. Once the project is, is bid and accepted and the materials are ordered, again, be sure to identify rebar zero throughout the process. Project orders are tracked throughout fabrication and all bundles are delivered to the job site with bundle tags indicating rebar zero. The goal is to easily identify rebar zero on the job site. At the completion of the project, a certificate will be issued to directly document the greenhouse gas emission savings for this project. In addition, any Extra documentation, including calculation details or background information on racks or offsets can be provided as needed. While today's focus was on rebar zero, the same program can be applied to any of our steel products, including merchant bar, fence posts, and wire products. Regardless of your application, any steel products CMC produces can deliver net zero. As we literally say, it's what's inside that counts. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Keith, for this excellent presentation. As he's mentioned, we do have some time for questions now. Just open the Q&A located at the bottom of your Zoom window and post your questions there. We actually already have a few coming in, so we will get started with these. The first question asks, what is the difference in cost between rebar zero and typical grade 60 rebar? Uh, it's an excellent question. We, we look at uh, the um, rebar zero uh, product line as an adder to the basic uh, steel product itself. So uh, right now, the uh, additional cost for uh, rebar zero or the, the, the zero 
uh, program application to rebar is approximately $50 a ton. Again, that varies uh, a bit depending upon location, but uh, using $50 as a, as a normal metric is pretty close. It should be in the neighborhood of about 3% uh, above what the current market's at. Now, do the uh, RECs and carbon offset credits cost the same in all states? No, that's a, another good question. Uh, depending upon uh, how uh, renewable energy projects are built in various locations around the country, uh, we see a, a wide variety of cost uh, and viability of uh, RECs uh, and offset credits across, across the country. Uh, some locations like Texas, for example, uh, where there are a lot of renewable energy projects being built, uh, the REC credit costs are a little bit lower than what we see in other parts of the country. Uh, as far as carbon offsets themselves, it really is determined on the project itself. Uh, some projects are relatively simple to document and relatively simple to, uh, to make happen. Therefore, the cost is a little bit lower. Uh, some projects like um, a reforestation project, for example, are much longer term uh, and the credits are spread out over a much longer period of time. So technically, they're a little bit more uh, difficult to come by and we'll see the cost of those go up a little bit. Another question here asks, is there an EPD for rebar zero and are RECs and offsets included as a part of this EPD? Uh, another excellent question. Uh, right now, as of the way the ISO standards are written, uh, the use of RECs and carbon offsets are not able to be included directly in an EPD. Uh, there are some manufacturers out there or producers out there that are trying to accomplish that. Um, but it, it, until now, until the guidance comes out, which uh, should occur in the next few months, until some guidance comes out on how to accurately do that, uh, there, isn't, there is not an EPD for rebar zero. That said, uh, the basis of all the calculations are built into the EPD, and that is part of where we get a lot of information to, to know what needs to be directly offset with, with RECs and offsets. Another question asks, how does a customer know that the RECs and offsets are legitimate? Um, again, another, uh, another excellent question. Um, we spend a fair amount of time vetting these projects uh, to make sure that, in fact, they're legitimate projects. Um, we won't, for example, buy offset credits for anything that uh, is outside of North America, uh, largely, again, because it's much easier to, to confirm the actual project and, and you know, spend some time and understand what that project is all about. Um, so uh, one of the primary uh, concerns of, of all of this uh, in, in a project like this is the, the viability and the legitimacy of, of offset credits and, and renewable credits. So we do have a, a list of criteria that we look for um, for any project uh, before we make any kind of uh, credit purchases. And another question asks, isn't the use of RECs or offsets just a way to transfer the emissions to someone else? Uh, actually, not really. Um, the RECs and offsets uh, do identify, again, specific projects which have measurable results, measurable differences. As I mentioned in the presentation, uh, the, the REC itself is, is sort of separating the renewable energy uh, attributes from the actual electrons themselves. So a solar project in, in uh, West Texas, for example, can uh, add electrons to the electricity grid. Those elect those electrons flow in any direction to the next uh, nearest uh, consumer of electricity. Uh, however, since we uh, contracted specifically for that electricity, uh, the renewable energy credits or the attributes associated with those electrons are delivered directly to us and therefore can be applied directly to uh, our product. Uh, in that case, uh, it's no different than having a, uh, a solar field on our own property. Uh, the difference is, is there's a, a transmission loss that occurs just by putting uh, electricity on the grid. Uh, that transmission loss is accounted for uh, in the uh, electricity that we consume. Uh, we do have um, one location that has a significant solar field on site. Uh, again, uh, it avoids that transmission loss, but the uh, calculations are still identical. Uh, it just uses a slightly different emission factor. Is the ordering process the same for Merchant Zero, Wire Zero, and Post Zero? 
Yes, it's uh, exactly the same. Uh, your regional sales rep uh, and our commercial team in general can uh, guide you through that process, however, uh, but depending on the product and, and depending upon your location. And is there a minimum order quantity for Rebar Zero or similar products? No minimum order quantity, uh, no maximum order quantity either. Um, it is conceivably possible to uh, decide to do a part of a project, for example, uh, with rebar zero and the rest just using traditional uh, black rebar or whatever other product is necessary. Um, we, again, uh, try to dig in and get a little bit of information about the project ahead of time, understand your goals uh, and, and, and what we're uh, trying to accomplish. Uh, and then apply those uh, directly. So uh, there is no minimum order quantity. Um, as again, I mentioned in the presentation, as we spread out the projects over a long period of time, uh, we spend a fair amount of effort to make sure that the racks and the offsets are, are actually concurrent with the actual production themselves. Uh, so they reflect reality as much as possible. Um, and, and again, that's uh, one of our internal criteria that, that uh, makes us feel like we're, uh, we're actually uh, providing the appropriate amount of offsets and, and, and credits to uh, to make sure that we have a, a net zero product that's delivered to the job site. Another question asks, what is the key difference between rebar zero and other zero uh, net zero options currently available? Um, excellent. Uh, again, uh, rebar zero and all of our uh, net zero uh, product line uh, accounts for scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions. Uh, in some cases uh, in the steel industry, scope three emissions can account for anywhere between 25 and say 60% uh, of, of the uh, product total product emission profile. Uh, so uh, ignoring or, or not concerning uh, scope three emissions uh, uh, do, uh, do leave a lot on the table. So uh, if all the other programs that I've seen uh, out there in the market today account for only scope one and scope two emissions, which again are direct emissions inside the gate uh, and uh, electricity or energy purchases. Um, so when you look at rebar zero, we're accounting for everything upstream, which is anything we would have bought uh, to make uh, any, any steel product um, and then include everything downstream, which includes transportation from the mill to the fabrication shop includes any waste and handling of any waste uh, or recycled product back to the mill uh, and transportation included. It also includes transportation from fabrication to the job site itself. Again, all the other associated uh, emission factors that, uh, that uh, are associated with that. So this product, uh, Rebar Zero, is a true net zero product from uh, cradle to job site. Uh, what happens at the job site, that's when um, when the project team takes over, but uh, delivery to the job site is included and, and therein lies the difference between every other uh, product like it, like it on the market. Another question asks, is rebar zero up to the proper ASTM A615 CRSI and ACI standards? Yes, it is. Um, it is the exact same specification of uh, all uh, all of the uh, ASTM standards. Uh, so again, the, the product itself is not the same. The, uh, the use of RECs and offsets are essentially a, a, an, an office uh, paper uh, trail type uh, calculation that occurs. Uh, the actual product itself is identical to what's been uh, currently used and currently delivered and currently used today. Okay. I can also add that uh, sorry, Tristan, I can also add that, uh, again, um, while Rebar Zero and, and, and most of our discussion today has been around uh, the black bar or, or uncoated bar, uh, the same bar can be included if it's a um, uh, epoxy coated bar or a galv bar uh, or galva bar or Chromex, uh, uh, cryo steel, uh, uh, all the products, all the steel products that CMC can deliver, we can apply the same program to. Okay, we still have some time for questions. So uh, if you'd like to have one of your questions answered, please submit it through the uh, Q&A.
My uh, contact information is uh, on the screen currently. So if uh, anybody does have any additional questions or wants more information on Rebar Zero or any of our steel products, uh, please feel free to reach out at your convenience and I'm, I'm happy to fill in any questions that I can answer. And with that, it appears that we have no further questions. Thank you, Keith, and thanks to everyone who joined us today. And as Keith mentioned, if you need to reach out with any additional questions, you can find his contact information right there up on the screen. As just a reminder, before everyone leaves, if you'd like to rewatch today's presentation or share it with a colleague, we will be emailing the link of the recording to anyone who registered for the demo cast within a week. So keep an eye out on your inbox. Finally, after you shut down Zoom, you'll be taken to a survey to provide feedback on your experience today. Please take a moment to complete the survey as it does help us to continue to serve your needs in the future. On behalf of the construction specifier and CMC, thank you again for joining us and please enjoy the rest of your day.